Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create seamless website backgrounds. The reason I'm doing this today is I was actually asked to do this over the weekend three times by three different people. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to do it. Well, if you're trying to create a seamless website background, what I mean by that is what we're going to do is we're going to create one single image. It's going to be roughly 60 by 60, 150 by 50, maybe 300 by 300 at the absolute most. And we're going to tile it in the background and it's going to look seamless. It's going to not show seams. And it's a really great way to create really beautiful backgrounds without worrying about file size. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what is a good background image. This right here is just about perfect. This guy will be very easy to turn into a seamless background. And the reason why are there are no repeating patterns. It is very irregular. And it is also very complicated. People often think the best images to use as backgrounds are uncomplicated patterns. Well, if it's a flat color, obviously, that's true. But if, what you're, for the most part, looking for is complication. So this will be very easy to turn into a, a seamless background. This is going to be one of the harder things to turn into a seamless background, and the reason why is because of the lights up here and the darks down here. That doesn't gel very well, but I'm going to show you how to get pretty good results with that. And this right here, even though there are patterns, it is still pretty complicated and pretty irregular and should be pretty easy to turn into a background. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with the easiest first. What we're simply going to do, this is a 300 by 300 image, and I'm just going to select all, and I'm going to go to filter, and I'm in Photoshop, by the way, and I'm going to go to other, and then I'm going to go to all. Offset. Now, the reason why you want this to be equal lengths and also even numbers is because you're going to have to put a half inside of here, half of what this is. So I'm going to put in 150 in horizontal and 150 in vertical and then check on wrap around and then we're going to hit OK. And there you can see nothing really dramatically changed which is really cool and the reason why is it was extremely complicated and even if I tried to create this as a seamless background right now I could pretty much pull it off let's show okay I zoomed out and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go image and the next one's gonna be much more complicated so they're never this easy all the time and I'm gonna select canvas size and I'm gonna change this to 900 and this is just for demonstration purposes and you can see if I paste it in here everything lines up seamlessly here for the most part now if I would have went in and did a little bit of editing this would be absolutely beautiful but I didn't because I wanted you to see how important it is to pick the right type of image for your backgrounds so now that was the first part. Now I'm going to show you how to do a more complicated guy. All right, so we got this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all again, and this time I'm going to take it to total perfect seamlessness. I'm going to go filter, and I'm going to go other, and I'm going to go offset. Again, I'm going to leave this 150 by 150 because these are 300 by 300. Okay, so that's super. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here in the toolbar to this Band-Aid. This is called the healing brush. And we're going to select that. And then I normally try to keep this pretty small, like in the 5 to 9 area. Hardness at 100 and spacing at 25%. All right, so now what we're going to do is zoom in on this a little bit. And I'm just going to get rid of all of the problems. I'm going to get rid of this line, basically. And I'm just going to hold down Alt Option and come in here and delete this imperfection that is in here. And then I'm just going to continue to do that over and over again. And what Photoshop's going to do is it's going to clean up everything real nice for me. I'm just getting rid of that line that's there where these images join together. That's all I'm doing. Not rocket science. And unlike with the rubber stamp, which I also could use, and before the healing brush was created, that is exactly what I did use, this gives you a lot better results because it sort of blends everything in with whatever is in the background. Let's switch this to 5. For the most part, I'm making everything blue because that seems to work better than anything else here. This is all based off of your own belief, though. You're in control here. And basically, the whole point of this is just to eliminate those lines. That's it. And then you want to be real careful when you get to the edge. Don't touch that because if you do start messing around with the edges, it's going to mess up what we did with offset. All right, so I got rid of the line for the most part. Everything's pretty well cleaned up inside of this guy. So let's go and check and see how good of a job I did. I'm going to select it, copy, and then I'm going to go image, canvas size 900, just like before, and then paste. And as you can see, everything is seamless. It's all going in here real nice. And it does not look like anything is in tiles. 
And there you go. So that's how to create a little bit harder seamless background. Now I'm going to create probably the hardest and that is metal because of the reasons I told you before. Again, this is a 300 by 300 piece. We're going to go in here, select all, filter, and I'm going to go into other and I'm going to hit offset just like before. Now you can see the problem. Look, see all the different colors? That's bad. Well, there is a way around it. I still have select all. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste a new layer. And then this new layer, I'm going to come over here in the layers panel and I'm going to hit on normal. I'm going to go down to what is called luminosity and select that. Then select all, hit filter. I'm going to go other. I'm going to go to what is called high pass. And you can see this is kind of but it does get rid of that problem or issue that we have there with the colors. Now I'm going to go a little bit the long way and there's a lot more that I would do. I'm going to actually select this guy right here, this individual square. And I'm going to go to image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. And I'm going to hit control or command H depending upon what OS you're on. And I'm going to try to make this top square the same as the bottom square color wise as closely as possible. And it's always better to select from the upper right hand corner. It's a little bit easier to judge where you're selecting. And then again, image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. Get rid of that with the controller command H. Take the brightness up and then select the bottom one. Be real careful to not select the same part twice that you already changed brightness for. Image adjustments, brightness contrast, controller command H. And the reason I'm doing controller command H, see those little dancing things? I think they're called dancing ants. That's what I'm getting rid of. All right, that's almost perfect. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go into filter and I'm going to go other. And now let's try high pass. Well, first I want to select all, filter other high pass. Now you can see that it's a little bit better here. Still got those lines showing up there, but there's definitely no image issues. This is just a by eye sort of thing. You just do it as much as you want. And then we hit OK on that. And then guess what we do? Go in with the healing brush again. What you want to do is try to avoid these things, like these blobs right here, because they're going to show up over and over again. Actually, what I normally do is just get rid of them all together. There, I don't have to worry about it now. You also want to try to avoid lines, because that's also going to make things not look realistic. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm sort of zigzagging as I go. And I'm just coloring over those lines like I just showed you in the previous tutorial. I'm going to get rid of this blob here. Get rid of this one. Remember, don't touch the outside edge. I'm sort of zigzagging here. All right. I sort of on purpose make this zigzaggy. Get rid of that. I'm getting rid of that. And this one doesn't even really seem to be showing up. Drew over that line. And then you can come in and go image adjustments, brightness, contrast, and then turn the brightness back up a little bit if you'd like. Turn the contrast up a little bit. Turn it down a little bit whatever you can to try to smooth it out. And then now we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it into a seamless background. Image canvas size 900. And you can see if I paste this in here. Remember metal is just about the hardest thing to do this with, but you can see that it as well is pretty much perfect. So that is how you make seamless backgrounds for websites. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.